Hey everybody, you're watching the Christiana321. I am the Christiana, and I recently started driving for DoorDash. <sighs> Alright, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hi, how are you? Feel, see Feel free to subscribe. I like to do some of these one take wonder videos where I don't do any editing. However, it does mean that I tend to ramble, and so this is take number three where we watched. The, the other ones and there is a lot of rambling. So, all that to say, if you go to my other videos, there will be rambling. You've been warned. However, for this video, I'm gonna try and rein it in. But, you know, this is already the, the third take of a one take wonder video, so I'm probably not gonna... I'm not gonna do this again. If there ends up being rambling, then there ends up being rambling, alright? So, side hustles. I think that side hustles are a great idea. Even if your main hustle makes you a decent amount of income, I always like to have some other stream. Because even though I really love my main job, I'm an engineer if you're new here, and it makes, you know, a good amount for the way that I like to live my life, I don't need another stream of income if I don't want one, uh, but I want one because, you know, things happen. Ugh. COVID taught us all that, or 2009, I, I think it's just the, the millennial in me that has seen way too many world events rock everything. That makes me think that, like, if something terrible happens, you have an emergency fund, great, but also having some other way of making money is helpful. It, but I mean, if something happens to my main job, let's face it, something probably horrible has happened in the world, and I don't know if I'll be able to keep doing DoorDash. This took a weird turn. <laughs> but if you are in a position where your main job is, like, enough to pay the bills and let you live the life that you want to live. I don't think if you want to do a side hustle, go for it. If you are already like, I, I've got enough working hours in the, in the week. I, I don't want to do more work. I want to just hang out with my loved ones. Maybe take some extra naps, watch Netflix, whatever your bag is. Great. I love that for you. Live your life. Uh, do have an emergency fund. That's good no matter what. We're getting into tangent territory again. Um, but if you do, are, if you're going to go for a side hustle and you already have a great main job as far as income is concerned, I think the bigger aspect is pick something you like. Because if you're going to be sacrificing your free time when you don't need to be, then you better be getting some joy out of it as well as some dollars, you know? If you are have the ability to make that choice, either your main hustle or your side hustle, preferably both, should bring you joy. And driving around does bring me joy. I have always done this, mostly in college. If I had a stressful week, stressful week or whatever, I would be driving just wherever, uh, and not making any money while doing it, uh, but listening to the radio very loud. Now I tend to listen to audiobooks or podcasts, or I've got YouTube Premium, so I'll start a video and just like let that be playing in the background. It's nice. Anywho, what was I saying? Oh, and then the other thing is. Me and my boyfriend have used it as a date night a couple of times where, like, we ride around together doing it, and that's, like, weirdly kind of fun. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. We enjoyed it, but we're kind of, we're, we're weird sometimes. All right, let's get to the numbers. That's why I started doing DoorDash. I like it. I like driving. It doesn't involve interacting with too many people. Otherwise, like, I could do Uber or Lyft where I'm trying 
humans around, but I'm not, I'm not big on human interaction. It's not, not my bag. Anyway, driving food around is much better. And we get to find some cool new restaurants in the area that we didn't know about. And we can kind of judge them uh, without <laughs> purchasing from them. Mostly based on the smell and the vibes when I walk into the restaurant to pick it up. There are a lot of really good seeming, we haven't tried them so I can't speak to the taste, but good seeming uh, Mexican food around Green Bay that we just had never heard of before. Um, so most of my door dashing has been in the, so I live in Wisconsin, hi if you're new. Uh, but most of my door dashing has been in the Appleton area, and then Oshkosh, Wisconsin is just south of me, and they've got a college there, Green Bay, was, uh, Green Bay, nope, University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh. This, this is going great, you guys. Oh, jeez. And then Green Bay is just north of me, and oh, I need to learn that area a little bit better. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a popular area, so most of my door dashing has been in those three. And, um, we'll get into some other stuff that I tried. So week one, before taxes, before anything else gets taken out, made $253.91. In the app, you can see your active time, which is the amount of time from when you accept an offer, pick it up, and deliver it and then the total time is the total time that you were active hmm, total time that you were live dashing in the app so that includes your wait time when you're like after you make your delivery and you're waiting for the next offer to come in so my total active time of actually making deliveries was ten dollars er, ten hours which would equate to about twenty five dollars per hour pretty decent and then my total time in the app was 14 hours, which make brings my uh, dollars per hour down to $18 per hour. Not as good, but still like slightly better than the average starting wage for a non-degreed like degreed position in this area. Most of those started at like 15 to 17. So, um, the big upfront costs are you need a vehicle of some kind. If you're in a city, you can do it on a bicycle or a scooter or whatever. Um, but you need to have access to a vehicle of some kind. I'm just using my personal car. And then you got to pay for gas, which I reckon I sp drove about 150 miles doing this and spent about $30 on gas. I don't know if that's accurate. That seems high. Um, calculating exactly how much I spent on gas is a little bit difficult since I also use the car for personal use. And then also I used my boyfriend's car for <laughs> a couple of the hours in there, which I filled up his tank as well, but it wasn't completely full when I got it. Anyway, and then insurance. Talk to your insurance company, make sure that you are covered for this type of work. Um, mine went up by about six dollars a month, which I was expecting it to be way more just with how everybody talked about it, which kind of makes me think that maybe I didn't get the right coverage, but I, I need to talk to them anyway about another element. Um, some things that are good to purchase up front uh, that I have not purchased yet are a really good phone mount. So some of the apps will work with your um, iPhone Play thing. You know, it pops up on the screen in your car. Um, Android Auto, apparently, though, does not, uh, does not have that capability. And I have an Android phone. Google Pixel. Not Spawn. Um, so, uh, yeah, it makes it slightly more challenging to not have it at display height. And you can still use Google Maps. It just it makes it a little bit more complicated. Just get a 
get a good phone mount if you don't have one already. I didn't think I needed one once Android Auto became like good. And then the other one is a pizza bag. So none of the other restaurants so far that I've seen care about this, but the um, some of the pizza restaurants won't give you the food if you don't have a pizza bag to put it in, uh, which I'm only accepting offers that are like two miles. I think the pizza's gonna be okay for two miles. Um, but it's good to acquire one and there, there are lots of different ways to acquire one. I don't think that you have to have a DoorDash one, but look around. Uh, I'm, I'm looking and I think there's a promotion on DoorDash where I can get one of theirs for not too expensive. I don't know. I'm still looking into that one, but it is one that piece of equipment that would make my life easier at this point in time. It's also good to have just like a regular uh, warming kind of bag um, and a cooler. It's like I've had to, um, or I've gotten some orders that included a frozen dessert of some sort, as well as heated food, which normally I just like put everything in my passenger seat or if it's a bigger order in my back seat. You don't want those touching. FYI, your Frosties are gonna melt. Um, so the other thing that you can do, all right, so DoorDash offers these promo rates which is basically if a ratio of number of dashers in an area to the number of orders coming in gets to like a certain point, you get a bonus for being there. And they try and predict that. They'll let you know like, okay, tomorrow in this area, it's plus three. And then you can schedule and reserve a spot uh, in that area. And I've seen it from 150 up to five dollars and whatever that number is it just means that for every order that you do in that area during that time frame you get that amount added on and so i did that some in oshkosh and up in green bay they both had it for different periods of time and it was great i had lots of orders and my my income for the evening was slightly higher however during the packer game there was plus five in an area that was not one of my typical ones and so I drove out of my way to get to Chilton, Wisconsin because it was plus five during a football game that's gotta be like a million dollars right no I signed up to be there I think for three or four hours I sat there for two hours and got one order and that so that one order was ten dollars for that two hours of time plus like driving out of my way to get there no so i like i canceled the rest of that shift drove over to appleton and made double that in like 15 minutes it was i was not happy that i wasted all that time but that's how you learn like uh if an area just because the ratio is good like one I, I'm guessing there's just no dashers over there and so they're trying to get people to go over there but because there's no dashers there people don't order from DoorDash over there very often I guess I don't know sometimes the promos are helpful sometimes they're not it's still a risk you're still just at the mercy of when people are going to order things and it, it's much better to just stick with the areas that you know are there are people that order their dash there. Colleges. Being around colleges, being around the mall. I had my first order from inside the mall food court recently. And that one was difficult because a lot of times I don't look at the details. I just like, click the directions box like as soon as it pops up i look at the price i look at the total distance i'm going but i don't pay much more attention to that and then it gets me into 
a parking lot and then I look at the name of the restaurant once I'm in the parking lot just to make sure that you know, I'm in the right parking lot which this happened too where it said it was taking me to a Taco Bell and it took me to a like auto mechanic that's not I don't think they serve tacos there they're very oily tacos uh luckily that, that was one where I was familiar with the area so I was able to get to the Taco Bell anyway what am I saying oh yeah the mall one was confusing because it just basically following the instructions it was kind of having me go in a loop around the mall and I I got like a quarter way around before I was thought to look oh, no I was in the food court just have uh I was able to park near the door that was the food court door the map didn't know which one was the right door to go into anyway sometimes bugs are good sometimes they're bad um tips so I am I've always tried to be a good tipper like following the 20% rule knowing who to tip when whatever America is built on tip culture which you know it owns a whole other conversation we don't need to talk about that right now but what I have discovered and what I might be I want to enact this change and I don't know the right vehicle to enact it with is when you're getting delivery the tip should be based way more on the distance that you are from the restaurant especially if you're doing it from like DoorDash or whatever like if you're ordering directly from Pizza Hut then they can figure that out but because of the way DoorDash is it isn't really taking that into account with the base pay or the promos or anything like that so if you are 10 miles from the restaurant I don't care if you ordered $50 of sushi or $5 of Taco Bell if I'm having to drive 10 miles I'm more likely to decline that offer if the the tip is you know a dollar whatever five dollars um I'm bad at doing quick math while I'm recording so what was I saying? Yeah, if you're far away from the restaurant, just know you're going to get your food faster because a DoorDash person or an Uber Eats person or whatever is going to be more inclined to accept it and it's going to take, you know, less time to find somebody to accept the, the offer if the, the price, the tip makes sense for the amount of distance that they have to cover. And I think that that's just a good idea in general with, um, at restaurants, if you're eating in, usually the restaurants that take a long time that you're sitting and you're taking up a table for a long time are more expensive restaurants. And so the, the tip is automatically increased for the amount of time that you're sitting there. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm tired. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, so, well, I've been doing DoorDash. My boyfriend has uh, other ventures. Um, I don't want to give anything away in case he wants to make a video. But uh, we, we want to do a competition of some sort to compare Uber Eats to DoorDash and which one is better. And I don't know the best way of doing that. Where right? like we do one week of uh, DoorDash versus one week of Uber Eats, except then like, if you know one of those includes a Packers home game, then that could significantly change what it's going to be. Um, so I don't I don't know how we would compare. The two. One idea that I have is to, um, like, one of us 
drives one app, the other one drives the other for an evening and first to 50 bucks wins. But we have different styles of driving and different uh, acceptance rates for offers. So we just have different techniques when it comes to doing this sort of work. So I don't know if that would be fair unless we agreed certain rules for accepting offers. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we do a competition? If we do, what's a fair way of comparing the two apps? Um, it can involve a second person or just be me. That's, that's fine too. I don't mind. All of that to say, I do want to do a few more videos on door dashing or side hustles. So if there's anything you want to know or you want to see, let me know and I'll, I'll uh, start planning those. I'm very excited. I don't think that I'll continue with it this winter because I'm not a snow driver. That is not in my skill set and you have to be quick and I'm just very cautious, especially in the snow. So and that probably won't uh, net me very many, very much money once it starts snowing. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Good night, sweet dreams.